Welcome to your Construction Safety Association of Manitoba's Virtual Toolbox Talk Series. Brought to you by CSAM The Safety Conference, Canada's premier and North America's largest construction safety conference. Excavations pose inherent risks to the workers, the site and the public. Obviously, when a home is being built and it has a basement, there is no option but to remove the soil. In simple terms, an excavation is the general re removal of soil from a work area. This can be deep or wide or even a tunnel. When a basement is being dug out for a new home build, this excavation has numerous hazards and those hazards should be controlled to the very best ability of the crew on site. Did you know that between January and the end of August 2021, Workplace safety and health officers have issued over 22 stop work orders relating to issues with excavations. Whereas only 20 orders were issued in all of the year 2020. The Manitoba Regulation Part 26 outlines the requirement for excavations and all workers and their employers should be aware of these requirements prior to beginning the work. Any worker that is doing excavation work must have developed safe work procedures from their employer and be trained in those procedures as to help avoid any incidents. Within part 26, there is guidance for requirements in Manitoba when an excavation is about to occur. This includes what processes must be in place prior to and during the excavation, risk identification, guarding, and the protection requirements for collapse or cave-in prevention. As always, a hazard assessment should be completed prior to beginning any work. This documented assessment will assist in identifying the existing and potential hazards in and around your worksite. Your equipment should be inspected pre-use to verify that it is operational and has no defects that may cause an incident during the work process. And again, this pre-use inspection should be documented. Let's take a look at just a few of the points found within Part 26. As with any construction project, your PPE that must be worn, your hard hat, and your safety footwear. Now, we must also wear our high visibility apparel because we have equipment on site. Chances are, you'll be working next to a roadway as well. So, with the cars and other vehicles driving past, high vis must be worn so you are visible to those drivers. Depending on the noise levels and the time workers are exposed to those levels, hearing protection may also need to be worn. So now that we are safe and we have all of our PPE, let's look at what's required to complete this excavation. The first couple of things that are required to be done before an excavation can commence is to obtain your registration number, complete the permit, contact Workplace Safety and Health, and complete the locates for underground utilities. The utilities will be marked with stakes, flags, and or paint, which will identify the center line of that service. If your excavation is through or across where a utility is identified, you may need to support or secure that utility line to ensure it doesn't break or collapse into the excavated area. In new home development areas, these utilities should be clearly marked. If the site you are working on does not have any identifiers, your employer should contact the appropriate agencies and get the locates redone. Breaks in electrical, gas, and water services can cause serious injuries, maybe death. Hitting an underground electrical line can result in electrocution, while hitting a gas line can cause an explosion. A broken water line can release a sudden rush of water, washing out the support systems and possibly causing a cave-in. Cutting telephone lines can create a serious problem if emergency calls for first responders are required. In the event of a gas line contact, call the gas company immediately. The company can check the line and shut it down if necessary. If a leak is suspected, people in the immediate area should be told to evacuate. Where service to an existing building or home has been struck, people inside should be advised to leave the doors and windows open, shut off all appliances, 
furnaces or other sources of ignition and vacate the premises until the gas company declares it safe to return. When we talk about protection, we include yourself, the worker, as well as any other trades in neighboring properties. And we include the general public. To protect yourself, you obviously need to be wearing your appropriate PPE. This would include your hard hat when outside of the excavation equipment, your safety footwear at all times, and because you are in and around other vehicles or equipment and potential traffic, you will need to wear your high-vis apparel. There are several other pieces of PPE that you may be required to wear, depending on the site-specific requirements or your company safety rules. You may need hearing protection if the equipment is running over 85 decibels. You may need anti-vibration gloves, depending how smoothly your equipment runs. You may need safety glasses and or a respirator for dusty conditions. The list does go on, but these are just a few examples of things that may be needed. Make sure that you are prepared and you have your PPE ready for any hazards that you will encounter. Now, let's protect others around you too. Barricades or fencing may be required as per part 26.12 of the regulation. If the excavation is one of the first to occur in a neighborhood and there is no inherent dangers to anyone else, a protective fence may not be required. This does not mean that the fence or barricade will not be required but the employer will need to complete a risk assessment to determine this. I'll give you some examples in a minute. But if the excavation is for infill housing or near a development area where existing live-in homes already occupy the area, some sort of fence should be installed and set up to protect the public from potentially falling into the excavation. The public is always curious about excavation and children enjoy watching the equipment do their work. So after hours, they must be protected from entering the site and getting injured. The employer will need to look at what's reasonable and practicable for each location based on the assessment of risk to someone else. If in doubt, always err on the side of caution and set up your protective fencing. Here are some examples of when a barricade fence should be installed and maintained when excavations are occurring adjacent to an occupied house, next to a show home, on corner lots, near any neighborhood cut through or path or trail, near a school, and in proximity to a playground. The type of guarding or fencing that can be used may vary depending on the materials available or even the time of year. Although snow fencing is acceptable, it should be six feet in height. However, it is recommended to use a six foot steel fence, as this is easily maintained and cannot be tampered with. All fencing should include a construction site sign and or an open excavation sign securely attached to the fence. In the regulation, part 26.5, it clearly states that the employer must ensure they designate a competent person to be the supervisor at the excavation site. This supervisor must be present at all times during the excavation or when the worker is in the excavated area. If a worker is in the excavation and it is more than one and a half meters deep, that supervisor must be at the surface and alert the worker of any potentially unsafe conditions and provide assistance in an emergency. Never enter the excavated area if you are the only worker on site even if it's just for a quick minute to do that one little thing. It only takes a second for an incident to occur, and that incident might be life-threatening. Depending on the depth and overall size of the excavated area, some other precautions that may need to be taken would include shoring and sloping. As we have previously discussed, an excavation can include a trench. With this in mind, a trench cage or shoring would be installed to help prevent a collapse. When a cage is used, it must extend a minimum of 300 millimeters above the top of the excavated area. More information about trenching and shoring can be located in the Manitoba Regulation, Part 26.20 to 26.27. To sum all this up, remember there are three key points. First, identify the hazards of your work area. 
This includes the potential for other workers or even Joe Average public to be injured. Know the risk assessment hazards before you begin the excavation process. Two, communicate the hazard findings to those around you that may be affected by your scope of work. That includes warning signs and barricades. If you have a crew on site, they should read and sign off on the completed hazard assessment. And three, control the excavation area with a fence where applicable to prevent unwanted foot traffic in your workspace. If the excavation area is very small, such as a trench, another possible method to prevent personal injury might be a hole covering. If this method is used, the covering must be identified with such markings as hole painted on that covering. We hope this has been informative and provided you with or even refreshed some of the information that is within the regulation part 26. CSAM has several other toolbox available for review on our website at constructionsafety.ca. But until next time, stay safe out there.